Hi, welcome to a new tutorial. My name is Matthew and in this one I'm going to show you how you can create a Chrome extension in less than 10 minutes. So if you don't know what a Chrome extension is, it's simply an application that you can install into your Chrome browser which performs some kind of extra function that you like to achieve. And so all these browser icons that you see in the top right hand corner of your Chrome browser those are all Chrome extensions and it's actually really easy to make one and thanks to Chrome's amazing documentation you can actually get started just by going to developer.chrome.com and go to slash extensions slash dev guide and here you will see a lot of different APIs that Chrome provides and so without further ado let's jump into it so we'll go into Visual Studio Code and we'll just open up a project directory. And so now I've opened up this Chrome extension directory and we'll be working out of this. So right off the bat, the first thing to do is to create a manifest.json file. And so a JSON file has syntax that has these curly brackets and inside here we specify different parameters using the double quotation marks. So every single field or parameter of this JSON file, which is kind of like a settings file, would be defined inside here. And so this is a required file that Chrome needs in your extension. And this is basically identifying it as an extension. And there's a couple things that you'll need to define in the beginning. The first one is the name of the extension. So this is simply, for example, getting started just like that and then you'll need to specify the version so this you can set to whatever you'd like but we'll just set it to 1.0 you could make it 1.0.0 as well if you'd like to do it like that and then you can give it a description and this will just be tutorial And then most importantly, you'll need to specify the manifest version. And so this is basically a standard version that Chrome has introduced, which at the moment is two. If you do not set the current version, the manifest version to two, then you'll probably run into some errors. So these are just the basic things that you'll need to define in your Chrome extension to get it up and running. And actually we are pretty much already done. We could go and load this into our Chrome developer extensions. And so let's actually do this. So, so here, what you'll want to do is you'll want to open up a new tab and go to Chrome and then colon slash slash extensions. And this will load up this page for you. And here you'll see a list of the extensions that are already installed in your browser, as well as the Chrome apps. So Chrome apps are completely different to Chrome extensions, but you actually make them in a very similar way. So here what you want to do is go to the top right hand corner and toggle the developer mode on and this will allow you to then load an unpacked extension which will then open up a browser for your your computer where you can select the folder of your Chrome extension and so here I'm just going to select the Chrome extension tutorial directory which only at the moment includes our manifest JSON file and I can select that and then you'll see here it adds another extension to the list of extensions and it says you're getting started version 1.0 and then here's the description and this ID and if you go to the top right hand corner then you can see that there's this little icon here with a G and that's because the first letter is G for getting started and that is representing our Chrome extension. So obviously at the moment it doesn't do anything, but that is simply how you can get started with just importing it into your browser and knowing that it is already installed. So now let's just demonstrate a couple things. I'm just going to explain a few core concepts about extensions. So the first is the type of JavaScript files that Chrome allows. So the first, are background scripts. Background scripts essentially do what they say they do, they run in the background of Chrome. They listen for certain events 
and then they're called when something has happened that you've specified for the extension to listen for. So this could, for example, be a new tab is opened, or it could be using an API that listens for web requests, and so on. But essentially, it's like a net in the background of your browser, and it performs general functions for not specific tabs or specific targets, but it catches things in general. The second type of script is a content script. Now, a content script is directly targeted at specific URL matches. And so this could be something like specifying a certain script to run on the New York Times website. So you would specify the match of the script to run on the New York Times website. And then that script would be called every single time that person is on the New York Times website. So that is what a content script does. Now the content script and the background script are two completely different scripts and they have different permissions and can do different things. So some of the things that a background script can do, a content script cannot do and vice versa. And that's a, probably the, one of the most important concepts when designing Chrome extensions is understanding what each file can do. So here we'll just illustrate this point. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just specify a couple more settings here inside our manifest JSON file. And so the first one is going to be the page action. Now the page action is a JavaScript object and inside the object we can specify basically what actions they are associated with our extension. And by actions I mean the default pop-up, so the actual HTML that would be displayed in our Chrome extension and then the icon. So to specify these, we could just specify the default pop-up, just like this, and then reference it to a certain HTML file. So for example, this would normally be popup.html. And we haven't made this file yet, but we could come here and add this file in and call it popup.html. And inside there, I'm just going to add some basic HTML here and set the title to Chrome extension tutorial and we'll just add a paragraph tag that says can you see me now to make this popup.html the actual display of our popup we would need to then tell Chrome when to display our popup so if we were to go back here we could refresh our Chrome extension by just clicking this button here and we would see that there aren't any changes that have occurred. Our extension is still grayed out here. And if we click it, we see it just says getting started and it has options and then a whole bunch of these other settings. But we can't actually use it at the moment because it's grayed out and we don't want it to be grayed out. You can see that some of these other extensions, they have color and that means that they're actually currently active. Now we want to do that with our Chrome extension as well. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to add another field and this is going to be the content scripts. Remember these are scripts that are called when we match the URL. So this is a list and inside this list we'll put a JavaScript object which contains the matches that we're looking for. And this is a list of matches. So this could be many URLs. You could add as many as you want. But I'm just going to add one and that is going to be this uh, this URL so it's going to go to the JSON placeholder website which is this here and I'm so I can just copy this right right here and I'm going to put a star which basically means it could be www it could be without the www so that is just looking for all types and I'm going to just put a dot there so any prefix dot JSON placeholder and then the rest of this here and then I'm going to put a star at the end of this .com. So basically this means for any for any website that has JSON placeholder .type I code .com and any suffix afterwards, it will match the content script that we define to this URL. So here we can specify the CSS 
and we could also specify the JavaScript, but I'm only going to specify the JavaScript for this. So here we just say JS, and this is also a list. And in here, I'm going to put content.js. And again, we haven't created this yet, so let's just create this quickly here. And inside here, let's just log out here. And let's see if this actually works. So let's go into our extensions, refresh the extension, go to this JSON placeholder, refresh the page, and we go to our console in our developer tools. So if you want to see how to get there, you just click the three dots here, more tools, and then developer tools, or you could right click and then click it inspect, and then go to console, and then you can see it says here, here. And it's telling us where that's coming from. If we click that URL, then it takes us to the actual script that was called content.js. And that's where we see the console log was being called. So this is essentially telling us that the content script is being run on this website. And if we were to go to, say, our developer tools website, and if we inspect here, go to the console, and let's refresh the page then you can see that there was nothing that was logged out so it's clear that it's only working for this website and not anything else and so that's actually what a content script does lastly we'll want to take a look at the background script so inside the manifest file i'm going to add another setting here and this is going to be background now this is a javascript object and in here we specify the scripts and the scripts is a list of scripts we want to run in the background. So I'm just going to make this background.js. And I'm going to add another parameter here, which is persistent. And this we set as false. Now inside our directory here, I'm going to create background.js. And this script is basically going to listen for a certain event. But before we get to that event, I'm going to add one last field here to the manifest. And that is going to be the permissions field. And this is very important. There's quite a lot of permissions that you can set. And the permission that I'm going to ask for in this extension is basically the access to this URL. So I'm actually just going to copy that and I'm going to paste it right there. So basically what this means is that by using this extension, you are giving permission to any URL that follows this expression here. Now what we want to do is we just want to make our Chrome extension icon here display when we're on the certain URLs that actually display it. So if we go here to just refresh this and refresh our JSON placeholder, you can see it's still not being activated. And that's what we want to achieve now. We want this to show when we are on this specific URL. So to do that, I'm going to go into the content script and I'm not going to just console log there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to send a message from our content script into our background script. And so the API that we use to do this is using chrome.runtime.send message. And the send message takes a JavaScript object. And in there, I'm going to specify the message uh, field of the object. And I'm going to set it equal to this string, which says show pop-up. So basically what this is doing is it's sending a message in our Chrome application, and it's giving the JavaScript object as a parameter, which contains this message field here. This could, you could set this to request or whatever you really want it to, to be. I'm just going to make my message. And then we can listen for those events in the background. So specific, specifically listening for the messages being sent. Now to listen for those events, we just have to call chrome.runtime.onMessage. So notice this one was send message. Now we're saying on message and we say add listener. So we're listening for these messages. And I'm going to use ES6 syntax, which takes a request a sender and a send response and we use the arrow syntax just like that and basically what we want to do is we just want to check 
what the message field is off of the request. So to do this, we just say if the request dot message equals to, and we set it to show pop up. So we say if that is the message, then we want to display our pop up. And so to do that, we use the Chrome page action. And so we just say page action dot show. And the only field that it takes in this show method is the tab ID that we want to show it in. And that ID is the ID of the tab that just sent the message. So meaning if I'm, if I'm inside this tab right now, and this is the tab that sends the message because this is the content script that's running, then this is the same tab that we want to see our Chrome extension light up on. So we can access the tab ID off of the sender because this is one of the fields being passed into the listener. So we just say sender.tab.id. And so now let's actually see if this works. So we just refresh this, come back here, refresh our JSON placeholder. And now look over here, it's now, it's gray. It's not grayed out, like it's not faded out, but it actually is colored in. And if we click it, then you can see this, can you see me? So this is just showing that it is working our popup.html is being displayed because our page action has just been allowed. And that was because we listened for a message which was sent in our content script. And the content script is called every time the URL is matched inside this match statement here. So that concludes this basic introduction to a Chrome extension. If you'd like to see anything more on this, then please leave a comment down below. Otherwise, Thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you enjoy some of our content and give this video a like if you really enjoyed it. Thank you for watching.